Next one, mistake number three. Fool by randomness. So there, when you are speculating, when you are dealing in something called probability, right? there is something called the law of large number. So this is a, a theory right, that states that in the short run, your trading results is actually random. And it only aligns right, towards the system expectancies right, in, the, in the long run. So what do I mean by this? Right? So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a, a 50 cent coin in your hand, a coin, whatever, as long as there's a head or tail, there's a coin in your hand. When you toss the coin, right, toss it the coin six times, okay, I'm sure you can agree with me that the coin toss, right, is not going to come up three heads and three tails. Exactly. There is a chance that might happen, but there's also a good chance that it could be four head. <laughs> not four head, all right. Four heads, okay, and two tails. I know what you're thinking, right? Four heads and two tails, or it could be five heads and one tail, or maybe even six heads and no tails at all during that uh, six coin toss. That is possible. And and here's the thing, right? <clears throat> you intuitively know that if you <coughs> toss the coin many times, let's say 100 times, 500 times, 1,000 times, you know that it's likely to have 50% hit and 50% tail. But in the short term, right, when you just toss the coin six times only, it's not likely to have three hits and three tails. And this is what we mean by the law of large number is that in the short run, right, your results, right, an individual result is actually random, and it's only in the in the long run when you have a large sample size. Only then will it be aligned towards its system's expectancy, right? Just like the coin toss. So, in trading terms, right? Let me give you an example. So, let's say you have a system with a fifty percent winning rate. So here are the few most important points which one needs to understand if they want to become consistently profitable. The first thing is identify your edge. My dear friends, let me tell you one thing. A lot of people don't understand what this edge is. Okay, so edge, as you can see on the screen, they have to spend a lot of time because this is the place where there's higher probability of one thing happening over another. And you must be knowing this thing. You should know this thing that most of the traders spend humongous amount of time in understanding their edges. So when I say it took me a few years to get into the market, it was not just psychology, but also to understand what is my edge. Now this could be a cognitive edge, this could be a behavioral edge, this could be an intuitive edge, mechanical edge. Every person has got a different edge. For example, I meet a lot of traders through various carnivals and conferences. So I found that a few traders are exceptionally well when it comes to executing commodity trades and that too within macro seconds. So they have just got into algo systems, algorithm systems, and they are executing it very quickly. On the other hand, there are a few people who do something which is known as techno fundamental analysis. They go on the macro side, they look into the longer picture, and then they are able to execute it well. So the first important thing is you not to replicate someone. Everyone's personality is completely different. You got to understand what personality suits you and accordingly you have to find your edge. And this takes a lot of time. So you got to write down a lot of things. You got to write down your SWOT analysis. That is strength, weakness, opportunity, threat. And you got to do a complete research. In the lens of classical charting, we had the rectangle bottom in 2015. We broke out. Uh, of that and immediately formed an ascending triangle, broke out of the ascending triangle in mid 2016, formed a flag. Uh, we moved then into a parabolic advance, it's an upward slanting flag. And then you'll see the three boxes, the three red boxes on the right side of the chart where we had what, what can be called J hooks. And I'll take a look at that and, and show you that in a little blown up chart. But again, and then a parabolic advance that, that terminated in early 2018. So we can look at that start and say, did this advance comply with the basic tenets of classical charting? It absolutely did. Classical charting principles are a wonderful way to look at the Bitcoin market and try to come to terms with what the market is doing. Um, take a look at this next graph and I talked a little bit about those red boxes and, and I have those labeled here as a bump, a hump, a lump, and a dump. Or this one, two, three, a rally, a break, a rally, and then a washout of weak longs. Uh, you see the idealized pattern of that hump, of the bump, hump, lump, dump down in the lower part of that chart. 
and I titled this tweet of uh, feeling a little lumpy, but again, a perfect compliance with classical charting during this advancing phase of, of Bitcoin. This was a chart from early 2018.